our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Greetings, everyone. Welcome and thank you for tuning in. I hope you had a wonderful week. Let us acknowledge now our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You call sinners to your right hand, Lord, have mercy. You sow the seeds of peace and justice in our lives, Christ, have mercy. You gather into one family all your scattered children, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all. That you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then, at harvest time, 
I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them up in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, through the words of the Gospel. May our sins be wiped away. If my father's mother were alive today, we call her Grandma Mickey, by the way, <laughs> she would be, oh, about 105 years old. Last week, if you tuned in, you certainly heard a bit about Grandma upstairs. That was my mother's mother. But now, a reflection on my father's mother. She had opinions about everyone and she would use old Italian phrases to describe certain persons. Sometimes we were on the floor laughing as she used these phrases to, and describing her opinion of the people in her life. Some people she would call a cataplasm, which means roughly in English, a mustard plaster. She would call people a mustard plaster. And so, for our purposes, what is a mustard plaster? Well, back in the day, before ventilators and breathalyzers, there were very few treatments available to treat bronchitis, pneumonia, or diseases of the lungs, where people had difficulty breathing. So one folk treatment that was used by many people, including Grandma Mickey, was the mustard plaster. You would take mustard powder and a little bit of flour of the same proportion and then add a bit of water so that it would be uh, a substance that you could spread on a cotton cloth. And the mustard plaster would be placed on the sick person's chest with the hot and moist cotton cloth in order to bring to the surface of the body the congestion that was stuck in the lungs. Now, if you left the mustard plaster on the person for more than a half hour, you would create blisters on the skin because the mustard powder is so powerful, a substance to extract all of the impurities that made the person ill with the bronchitis or pneumonia. Again, these were in the days before modern medical breakthroughs, antibiotics or other machinery used to extract the mucus that had developed in the lungs. But you could kill someone too if you did not do this carefully. And she would call some people, a, ah, these are cataplasm, and we'd be on the floor laughing. Why would Grandma Mickey use that phrase? But eh, these are the grandmothers in our lives. They all have different ways of interfacing with the world. And I raise that today because the good Lord has various images to present to his followers on pictures of the kingdom of heaven from little tiny to big and large. That is the kingdom of heaven. But sometimes it takes a lot to extract what does not belong in our lives and even to promote change in our world as well. The hearers of this gospel, though we are here in the year 2020, they would have heard something very familiar for the land that they worked on. Because when you grew wheat, in the ground, there would be these weeds that would grow alongside of the wheat. But at the early stages of growth, there was a particular weed called zizania. For those of you who want to look it up, Z-I-Z-A-N-I-A, -I -I -A, zizania. And the zizania was very similar in appearance to the weed. And so if the farmer was not careful, he would pull up not only the weed, but he would also pull out the good seed as well. And that is why in Jesus' image, Jesus instructs 
Let the farmer have both grow together and then worry about it later. Because you never know. There might be something underneath that you think is bad seed, but really is good seed. So Grandma Mickey would say, ah, he or she is a cataplasm. He's a mustard plaster, meaning ah, he's got some interesting traits. <laughs> I'll put it diplomatically for you. But if our Lord were cautioning us, Jesus would want us to see that there are possibilities in all persons for good and that that can be promoted, that we must be careful to dismiss somebody or to disrespect somebody on the face of a prejudgment or what we have said. All of us can turn and condemn somebody if we really wanted to, though we don't want that. And we could say, oh, that person is no good. Oh, based on maybe the first encounter with them. Maybe in 10 seconds, we come to a judgment that the person is not to be trusted, is no good, and is a cataplasm. <laughs> but the good Lord wants us to see that in every person, there is possible and potential growth. Why do we take it on ourselves to offer condemnation of someone? Instead, this is an enterprise left to the Father. Judgment is reserved for God. For you and me, we want to promote the good in all persons, even if it may hurt from time to time. It's easy to condemn. It's easy to say an enemy will no longer or ever be part of my life and I will never forgive her or him for what happened. But that gives a lot of power, not to you, but to them over you. And that's not an image of growth of the kingdom of heaven, at least as promoted by our Lord. Our Lord has a very different take and a very different vision on that. It means that when we interface with someone, what our judgment of that person, which we should not have in the first place, we may condemn, but they may be good underneath what we are observing. And similarly, we may think that somebody is a saint in our midst, but only the good Lord knows what is deep in the heart, and the saint may have some qualities for growth or areas for growth that only God may know. Who are we to say that the person is a bad seed or a good seed? Jesus says, let them grow together. And there's a wisdom for the church in that enterprise as well. The kingdom of God is always growing. And that growth occurs not because we've condemned somebody as a mustard plaster, but rather because God is giving us the energy to see growth and possibilities, potential in all human persons, both born and unborn. For me, and I'm sure for you, it hurts to see that our Catholic statuary in certain areas of the United States or even the world are being destroyed for whatever the motivation. Of course, we see Jesus as the Prince of Peace. He is nothing other than the Lamb of God who offered his life for us. How can he be anything but the author and Prince of Peace and a healer and a promoter of justice in our world? And so too is Blessed Mother that the church professes is for us a beacon and model of hope that we look to the immaculate heart of Mary who leads us to the sacred heart of her son. The Blessed Mother in interceding for us wants nothing but the best for every person that her son is guiding on the way of faith, God the Son. And so, as these statues are sometimes destroyed, 
We may think this is the end of the kingdom, and it may be easy to condemn a person for doing so, but I want you to see something different, that the statue may come down, but God never comes down. God can survive any calamity, and if God can survive, so too the seeds that he has planted in you and me. No matter what happens, there is nothing that can destroy the growth of the church within. When persecution occurs, and in certain governments over the history of the church, we have not been able to gather for one reason or another because the government would not permit it or it was a crime. Did the church fall down? No, because the church was inaugurated by God and not by men and women. And so no matter what external elements are gone, do not fear that the church will remain a strong and firm foundation and not because any condemnation of a person occurs, but rather we place our trust always in God, in the good times and in the bad. So be very careful. If my grandmother were here, we've got to be careful saying anybody's a mustard blaster or a cataplasma, although it makes us give a little laugh <laughs> and extend a smile. But we must try to see the good in every person, leaving judgment only for the Father at the end that we are promoting each other, we are promoting the body of Christ, and that no matter what may happen in our world, we are safe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please pray with me now in response to these prayers. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may reveal God's mercy in the way that we come to the assistance of those who need our care, the hungry, the homeless, the imprisoned, and the refugee, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all political leaders, that God's goodness and mercy may be a model for them as they fulfill and exercise their responsibilities for us. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who labor still under the effects of this virus, for all healthcare workers who care for the infirm, and for all essential workers who sacrifice that we may have life, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in this heat of the summer, especially the elderly or young children or those who have difficult medical conditions, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may be gathered into the harvest of the kingdom of our Lord, especially these souls for whom I apply 
this mass. Anthony Galka, Stanley Sowick, Ron Piotrowski, Richelle Strub, Richard Thomas, Hedwig Thomas, Lucia Malozzi, Leona Dobernek, Joseph and Justine Robowski, Shelley Serapilio, Anthony Marquito, Pietro De Meo, Ricky De Mania, Patrick Renzi, Mario Di Coco, Roseanne Salvino, Margaret Paniccia, Dolores Reaver, Edmund Kiebakowski, Dorothy Evans, Liz Van Buren, Ann Mocker, Pauline Haley, and Thomas Mosseri, that they may rest in the peace of our Lord always, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the soul of Sue Ann Kozak, who died this week, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for every intention you and I bring to the altar of our Lord today. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. And we ask our Lord to grant these prayers always and forever with the power of the Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you blessed the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of the angels and the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, 
Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward Scharfenberger, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. gave life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people. We pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. A special hello to all of our dear parishioners here in Schenectady, New York, from St. Adalbert Parish, Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish, and St. Paul the Apostle Parish who have tuned in. But to all of you, I heard from some in Arizona and California this week who regularly click play to be fed by the Word of God and to be in communion with our Savior. And so I hope you have heard from Jesus a word of comfort and strength in these times and to not be afraid no matter what life may be for you or whatever challenge you may be facing in life. For those here in Schenectady, our dear parishioners, we have the masses now on the weekend under the new rules and regulations, but I still miss all of you who used to be with us and who are still in communion all together in prayer. Do not be afraid. One day we'll be back together whenever that is. But until then, you are close in heart, and I am praying for you. Godspeed ahead on the road of life, and uh, until we meet again, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.